let's learn how to easily convert a logo to a vector in Photoshop CC in this simple tutorial. I first want to preface this tutorial by saying you will need a CC account because we are using the CC libraries. Secondly, this tutorial is for single color and simple shape vectors. If you have a multiple color logo or complex imagery to trace, this probably isn't the tutorial for you. And lastly, even though this is a Photoshop tutorial, I still recommend using Illustrator for detailed vectorizing. So if you're happy with that and you're happy to proceed in Photoshop, let's jump right in. With Photoshop open, go to File, Open. Locate the logo you'd like to trace. So mine is in my Assets folder. This can be a JPEG, a PNG, whatever you like. Select and click Open. So this is the type of logo and level of complexity that this tutorial will be suitable for. I'm going to split this into two parts. We're going to trace the image first and then we'll address the text later and I'll tell you why shortly. First things first, come to the Marquee tool, click and drag to make a selection around the image or icon section of the logo. Right click, layer by copy. So we will trace this layer first and then we'll address the text. Next, we're gonna to come to our libraries window libraries and with this layer selected press the add icon and extract from image now ignore the patterns that is a tutorial for another day what we want is shapes and here in the shape panel photoshop will now vectorize the selected layer so you can decide how little or much detail you want so i'm going to set mine to around i don't know let's say 85 you can invert the vector as well i'm going to leave that as it is and you can smooth on save as well, but again, I'm just gonna leave this as it is. I like this level of detail. Once done, click Save to CC Libraries. Once saved, click Close. So this vector shape will now have been added to your library. So if you open the library, come down there, you can see the Capture Shape 2. So I'm simply gonna click and drag this onto the image. And now you have a vectorized image that you can scale as large or as small as you want and once you're happy with the size press enter and you can see here there's no pixelation the vector artwork is scaling with no issues so i'll press backspace to delete now the reason why i didn't do this whole thing as you can see i've done this earlier so if i pull capture shape one onto the canvas i'll just scale it up and press enter pull this up here if i zoom in now command plus you can see that while it's done a decent job on the image part of the logo, the text part is very poor and this bottom line is practically unreadable. So we're going to address this in the second part of the tutorial by using fonts. But if I command zero to come back, press backspace. So let's come back to this capture shape. I'm gonna pull this onto the canvas and I'm just gonna place this over the top of the original image, press enter. And if I toggle these two off now, you can see that part of the logo has been traced. So if I put the background back on, now let's address the text section of this logo. And to do that, we're gonna to have to leave Photoshop momentarily. So if I come into a browser, I'm going to use a service called What the Font to try to identify the font used in the logo. I have left the link in the description for this website. So on What the Font, click Upload an Image. So locate your original logo file. So mine is in my Convert Logo Assets. Here's my JPEG, I'm gonna press Open. This will then take you to the Identify Font page. So this is the font I want to identify. It will automatically identify sections for you. So once you're happy with the selection, click Identify Font. And from there, what the font will pull multiple results of fonts that are similar or identical to the one that you uploaded. So the nice thing about this, I've got rather slab bulb, I've got multiple slab alt bold here, but if I come down breeze serif regular, which is very similar to the font selected, is a free font, and I know for a fact this is on Google Fonts. So I'm gonna use breeze serif regular. So from there, I've come over to Google Fonts, fonts.google.com, I've left the link in the description, and I'm gonna search for breeze serif. There it is, one style, select it, and simply click download family. I'm then gonna locate the zip file, so mine's in my convert logo assets. Select, double click to unzip, and from there then I've got Serif regular.ttf that I can install. Now I'm doing this on Mac, obviously this will be different on Windows, but on Mac it's very simple, you simply double click the font, this brings up font book, and you simply click install font, and this will install it into your library. Now armed with my new font, let's return to Photoshop, select the background layer, click to unlock it, let's bring down the opacity, to make this a little easier to trace. So we see we've got the capture shape two layer here, happy with that. So now we're going to trace this text layer. Command plus to zoom in, and you can use the H for hand tool to scroll down. To make life easier, what we can do is go to view rulers, and then we can drag out rulers onto the canvas to use 
as a guide. You don't have to do this, but if you want to be extra precise, using the rulers will help. Select the Capture Shape 2 logo so the text layer will now go above this. Press my Type tool, come to my Character panel. If you can't find it, go to Window Character. And I'm going to select the font I just downloaded. So let's go to Brie Serif, regular. I'm just going to click on the canvas and type out Everest. Use my Selection tool, and I'm going to use the Transform tools to resize this to the size of the original logo. So that looks about right. Let's press enter to confirm that. And obviously I can play around with kerning and spacing as well in the character panel to get that spot on. We can now repeat the same for where the impossible becomes possible. Command A to highlight, center align this, selection tool, and let's try to line this up using the transform tool. Press enter, and I can get this perfect. Hold shift, select these two layers, and I can use the center align tool just to get those central together. And then click on the canvas to come off these two layers. So we are nearly home and dry with this. Let's command zero to fit this to screen. And I'm going to view, guides, clear guides. So these text layers can be scaled. However, if you were to export this, you would have issues with the embedded fonts potentially. So what you want to do, if you are exporting say as SVG, right click the text layers, convert to shape. Same here, right click convert to shape and that way now you don't need to worry about including fonts with the export. So I would say this is looking pretty good so lastly we can address the color. We can either select these individual layers and we could use something like the blending options and a color overlay as such or select the bottom layer, hold shift, select the top text layer so I've selected these three layers now, right click, group from layers, group one that's fine, press ok and then going to add a solid color layer so let's just go with a red for now, press ok right click this color fill layer and create clipping mask and that will now clip with the group below so this will apply this color to all three of these layers and then I can double click this color at any time and I can choose another color accordingly and that way I can change the color of the entire logo in one go. So there you have it, that's how to easily convert your logo to a vector in Photoshop using two key tools the CC library's shape option for any imagery on the logo, and then the type tool with a downloaded font to replicate the text layer of the logo. As mentioned at the start of the video, there are limitations to doing this in Photoshop, and if you do have complex imagery, I would bring that into Illustrator to vectorize it properly. But this is a fast, simple, and easy method if you have a simple logo that uses one color and you want to do this in Photoshop. So I really hope you found this tutorial helpful, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, keep on designing, and I will see you for the next tutorial.